my name is Caleb Osterling, this is Prototank, and today we're going to be using After Effects to make it look like text, shapes, and logos are etched into other surfaces. This has a lot of application for things such as cool titles or just making a set look cool. So let's jump into it. As you see what I have here is a orbiting shot of a desk. It's really simple, just a nice smooth little orbit. So the first thing I'm going to do to add my text in is I'm just going to click on this layer. I'm going to go to the tracker panel. If you don't see it down over here, you can always go up to window, come down until you find tracker. Anyways, all we do is we hit the button track camera. As you can see, it's applied an effect here called 3D camera tracker. And what it's gonna be doing is it's going to be analyzing the footage and basically tracking it in 3D. So once it's done, it's gonna look like this. And as you can see, if I kind of scroll through here, we can see all those points moving in 3D space. What's really cool is this target kind of shows us different surfaces. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can select individual points or you can select between the points. You can right click and it gives you some options of things that you can add and so for right now we're going to go ahead and click create text and camera down here in our composition we can see a couple of layers got added tracker camera and the next one is text and so what this has done is it's taken the tracking information and it's applied it to a 3d camera and then it dropped the text in as a 3d layer so as we move we can see that the text is looking like it's kind of on the table. It starts the text off as being attached to whatever surface that we've decided to place. And because of that, I like to just use X and Y sliders rather than free sliding. Um, because if you use the Z slider and actually like slide it up or you free slide and it goes up on the Z axis, then when the camera moves, it may not quite look right. As you can see, it doesn't look like it's sitting on the surface, but it's floating above the surface. And for the sake of this, we don't want that. We want it to look like it's right on the surface. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this. I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis a little bit to about here and I'm just gonna scale it down. Now, before I go too far, I wanna point something out. I'm gonna go over to a full resolution real quick. And if you look when I move in here, up at the top of this image, all the details are crisp and at the bottom they are not and that's because when i filmed this i was filming with the shallow depth of field the text layer however is completely crisp so i'm going to fix that i'm going to click on my 3d tracking camera layer go to camera options and drop that down depth of field focus distance aperture and blur level that's really all i'm going to focus on right now so i'm going to go ahead and turn on my depth of field and so far, not really too much has changed. It's kind of hard to always see the effects. So I'm gonna grab my blur level real quick and I'm just gonna drag that up until I feel like I start seeing some effects somewhere. Because the next thing is I'm going to adjust my focus distance and I'm going to adjust it until I see that the part of the text that's over the crisp areas looks crisp and the part of the text that's over the uh, blurry area looks blurry. Once this is set, we don't need to alter that ever again. All right, and so now the next step of this is going to be making it look like the text is etched in. Right click our layer, we're going to go to layer styles, and first we're going to click inner shadow. And as you can see, what this did was this created this little shadow on the inside, it already makes it look like it's imprinted into the desk. And we're gonna go to our layer style settings under our text layer. First, I'm gonna click on blending options. I'm going to go to advanced blending. I'm gonna to go to my fill options and I'm just gonna bring that all the way down. And so that way it looks like we're just pressing it straight into the wood. Then I'm gonna to go to my inner shadow settings and I'm going to adjust the shadow until it looks like it somewhat matches the shadow of the other objects that we have here for reference. Go to my inner shadow color I'm going to use the color picker and I'm going to actually pick one of these shadows on the table and that way it has a more accurate shadow color. Then I'm going to adjust the angle until the shadow is coming from 
where it ought to be, which it should be on this right edge and on the top, kind of coming down at an angle, um, because that's how the shadow is coming off of everything else. All right, so that looks pretty good. Change the distance for my own preference. You can mess with this distance, and like make it look like it's as deep into the table as you'd like. I'm going to go to about eight. Then finally, I'm just going to increase the size a little bit so it feathers out just slightly more. There's that, as you can see, that looks pretty cool how it is. It needs a little something though. The edges on the left um, or on the right of this E, those need to have a little bit of a, a backlight. And as you can see over here at this part of the table, it's uh, brighter and these part of the cards are brighter um, because that's how the light is hitting the table. It should kind of be doing that as well and it's gonna make them pop. So to add that, we're just going to right click in the text layer again, go to layer styles. And this time we're going to add in a drop shadow. Let's go to this drop shadow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the color and we're going to use our color picker and pick the same color as this surface over here, where these highlights are, because that's what we're creating. Now, as you can see, it just kind of made the shadow disappear. And that's because the first thing we gotta do is we gotta go to this blend mode where it says multiply. What multiply does is it gets rid of anything bright so let's click on that and switch it to screen and screen does the opposite it gets rid of anything that's black and leaves all the brights and there we go we have a much better look so we're just going to adjust this until these um, little highlights that we've created land in the right spot and that spot is pretty much opposite of the shadows so uh, i'm going to go into my full resolution to kind of see this better since i'm so zoomed in I'm going to adjust this angle just a little bit until I think it looks like it makes sense. I think right there is pretty good. And I'm gonna bring down the opacity just a little bit so we're not uh, overdoing it. And there we go. Really, really simple effect. Now here's what's cool. Once you've gotten all of this down, you can make whatever adjustments that you want to and not need to worry about the way it looks. So. I can double click this and I can now change the text to say hello. And just be careful that it never goes over anything that you don't want it to be cutting into. There we go. And we can go to our effects and presets and we can go and animate this. So let's do some animate text. We'll do some animate in. How about we do typewriter? We'll just click on that. And now we can see that over time, the text will just type right in. Pretty fun great way to add text in that just looks unique. And as you can tell, that was really, really easy. Now I'm going to talk about how to add in a shape layer. So let's go back to our base layer table and I'm going to click on 3d camera tracker again, and we're going to kind of do the same thing that we did before. I'm going to right click this time. The options have changed a little bit. You see, it doesn't offer to create a camera and that's because a camera has already been created. This time what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna create a null. And here we see the null in our composition. And if we click on it, we can see where it is over here. I'm going to make it disappear though, because I don't wanna look at it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to layers. I'm gonna say new, I'm gonna go shape layer. And I see nothing so far. So I'm gonna drop this down. I'm gonna add uh, a stroke and then I'm going to add a rectangle. Actually, I'm gonna make sure I put that rectangle above the stroke so we can actually see it. And then I'm going to make this rectangle a lot bigger. I'm gonna click on stroke and I'm going to increase the stroke width so we can see it bigger. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I gotta make sure I remember to toggle its 3D view. And as soon as I do that, you're gonna see it changes where it is and it goes out of focus. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab this pick whip and I'm going to parent it to the null. So now, however the null moves, that's how this layer is going to move. And then I can simply just, you know, click on this and move it up until I find where it's kind of supposed to go and rotate it and stuff. And it's, you know, really extremely painstaking. No, we're actually not going to do it like that. No, no, there's a much easier way to do this. Instead, I'm going to click this pip, pick whip 
and I'm going to bring it over to null again, but this time I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna release, boom. And now it has not only parented to the null, but it has appeared exactly where the null is. So it's already flush to the surface. And again, I'm gonna use my Y and X axis to kind of drag it around. And I'm just gonna leave it right here. As you can see, we already got that depth of field thing going on because I left it over from the last uh, example that I did. So let's go ahead through the layer styles again. If you already created your text, you can always just come down and click on layer styles and copy and paste it like that. Um, but for the sake of right now, I'm gonna just go through it step by step again so that you can see how I did it. I'm gonna go a little bit faster than last time. So I'm going to right click the layer, go to layer styles, do an inner shadow. I'm going to go to blending options, advanced blending, fill opacity, bring that down to zero. I'm going to close the blending options, click on inner shadow, use the color picker to pick a reference shadow so the colors match up. I'm going to go to distance and I found that eight is the one that I like. I'm going to adjust the angle. And there we have that. And then remember, I also want to create those highlights. So I'm going to uh, right click layer styles, drop shadow. I'm going to go to my drop shadow. I'm going to bring it, change the uh, blend mode to screen. I'm going to use the color picker and pick on the highlight areas of the table. And then I'm going to uh, adjust the angle till it is on the opposite sides of the shadows. Looks good. And then I'm just going to bring down the opacity a little bit. And I think I want to increase its size just ever so slightly. All right. So there we go. And again, if we look at it without the drop shadow and then with it, helps it pop a little bit more. I do want to take it just slightly further though. So I'm going to take the shape layer. I'm going to add a repeater. Go to transform. I'm going to take the position of this repeater and hit zero. And then I'm just going to hit rotate and I can make a cool shape like this. See that? And it just, whatever changes I want to make, I can make. I can take the stroke width and I can bring it down so it looks like it's a finer kind of engraving into it, like so. Um, I can animate any of these so I can take this repeater and I can put a keyframe for the position move down over here and then have it uh, move off to the side a little bit and move down so we get to kind of see what happens over time as that moves if that's something you like we can even do things like I can add a path use my pen tool and I can just kind of draw something in here and as I do so it will uh, just stick to the table the way that I want it to. And so let's take a look at that. Oh, I gotta remember to turn off this repeater though. And now look at that. Now I've added this little etched in area um, to the table. You know, there's a lot of applications for that. Like if you wanna add neat designs to your table to make your set look cool. The last one I'm gonna do for right now is I'm going to make my logo look etched into the table. So I'm gonna to go to my project layer and I have here my logo. And what we need to do is we need to teach the computer how to read that uh, only certain areas need to be etched in and other areas do not. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to go to layer, new, solid. I'm gonna create call it black solid. Don't know why it said dark orange because it's black. All right, and then I'm going to bring my Proto Tank logo over this black solid. I'm gonna click on this black solid, go to toggle switches modes. I'm gonna go to track mat and do Luma Mat. Select both the Proto Tank logo and the layer, the solid layer. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna do pre-compose and call this logo. Hit okay. All right, now we try this again. Toggle switches. Enable 3D, grab the pick whip, drag it over to the null, hold shift, release, and there we go, it's in place. 
I'm going to go ahead and scale it up. And then I'm going to right click layer styles. And that's pretty awesome looking. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to my layer styles. Uh, I'm gonna start with inner shadow. I'm actually gonna open up drop shadow at the same time. And I'm going to create, let's see, I'm gonna say that by two seconds, I want it to be out, uh, totally emerged. So I'm going to go ahead and set a keyframe for the distance of both the drop shadow and the inner shadow. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it back a couple of frames and I'm going to set that distance to zero. Then I'm also going to hit the opacity on both. And I'm gonna bring that back about two frames and I'm going to bring that all the way down to zero. So it totally disappears. And now if I watch that back, it kind of pops out of the table. So anyways, once we decide that we like what we have, we can just go up to composition, add to render queue, and go ahead and uh, select our settings and such and hit render. Well, that's just about it. Next time I'm going to be talking about how to make it look like text shapes and logos are floating above the table, casting a shadow onto it. Uh, we'll be talking about 3D lighting and how to make it look like only a shadow is showing. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, go ahead and hit subscribe so you can see when that comes out. Thank you very much. My name is Caleb Osterling and this is Prototank.